I think I will start with the obvious question. Um, why did you want to make a film about this great fire in Notre Dame? Well, my first reaction was uh, not to get involved because when I heard about the fire, I was in a house uh, on the seafront in France where uh, television was not working and I heard the drama through the radio. Uh, the thing uh, that made it very personal for me is I live uh, walking distance. I mean, I'm three minutes away. My apartment is three minutes away from Notre Dame. I can see Notre Dame for, from my window. And um, also when, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little, I was a little boy from uh, the suburb, but every week I was coming to Paris and we would take the train and the train would stop at a station called Paris Pont Saint-Michel. And when I was going up the stairs, the first thing I would see was Notre Dame. And my mother, who liked heritage, uh, took me there so many times. Uh, by the way, I took my second picture with this little camera that I had when I was seven um, in Notre Dame uh, on the gallery called La Galerie des Chimères. Uh, the, this gallery up the at the top where you have all those monsters um, that uh, are the devilish contrast with the beauty of Notre Dame and, uh, and uh, Marie, uh, the, the mother of Jesus. I mean, um, that impressed me a lot. And um, uh, while I was in the film school, I was still uh, going at the Sorbonne and took a lesson uh, for my licence de lettres uh, in medieval art. Um, and I spent my uh, teenagers' time uh, making pictures of uh, churches. I am not a believer at all, but I love pla sacred places. And uh, you know, if it was a, a supermarket that uh, went on fire, it's not the same thing that uh, uh, Notre Dame. As you may know, as uh, the movie says, it's the most visited sacred monument in the world. Uh, because a lot of tourists are coming to Paris and it's free to get in. So everybody goes to this place and uh, it's, for many people, you know, it's a symbol of Europe. And uh, not, not only France, not Catholic uh, Church, not even Christian Church, just a symbol of the past of Europe. And um, what, what, what happened is when I heard what was happening, I was convinced that, because it was unfolding like a, a Wagnerian drama, and I felt there was all the, um, everything that would make a great screenplay, as if it was invented by a, a, a screenplay writer uh, in Hollywood. And I said, no, I don't want to touch that. I will be competing against a thousand directors. But a year later, there was only documentaries being made, and, um, my dear friend, who is the owner of, I think, the greatest, uh, the largest uh, cinema chain in Europe, um, offered me something that I was not interested in, which was to make a movie for screen, big screens in IMAX and, you know, Atmos Sound and all that, uh, but, uh, based on archive uh, pictures. I said, no, I was not interested. Yet he gave me some documentation and that evening when I read the documentation, which was a book, a very good article from New York Times, another article from The Guardian, I realized that it was a perfect screenplay. It, it was a thriller. And as you will see, it's surprising. Uh, what you're going to see is a true story. And um, I challenged, uh, it was a challenge for me to, to, to make a movie that was extremely close to the real events. Uh, so when you're going to be surprised saying this is not possible, well, unfortunately, that is what happened. And this is why I, I then became passionate. Uh, I interviewed all the five men that were involved with the drama, uh, all the, not all, but many witnesses, all the neighbors that were, you know, on their balcony when the cathedral was on fire. Um, I managed to get 35,000 videos from people who witnessed the event. 
And all that was very exciting. You know, I had done movies based on, re on re real stuff. I mean, Seven Years in Tibet with Brad Pitt was a true story, but a true story that took place 50 years ago. Um, and uh, even The Lover uh, was almost a true story. Um, so I'm fam and and uh, Enemy at the Gates with uh, Jude Law was also based on a true story. But it's different when you deal with a story that takes place 70 years ago or when you can interview all the people and you have real documents. So you'll see some of the, of the images have been t uh, shot by amateur but with very good iPhones. <laughs> and uh, uh, my, the excitement for me was to match those few, it's like 8% of, or 7% of real images from the period. All the rest is something that I shot, uh, like a big movie. You know, it's a rather expensive movie. It's a $30 million movie. Um, because I had to recreate all the places that are on fire. Uh, of course, not the big shots where you see the whole cathedral in Paris on fire. Uh, I didn't get permission to put fire again, in, <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but, um, you know, the challenge, the film challenge for me was to recreate the event and not being able to shoot inside the cathedral because it was full of scaffoldings. So I had to make, to, to recreate, to reproduce at the same size the cathedral inside of him studio uh, and also outside of him studio but on, on the back lot. Uh, there were huge sets that I put on fire and in order to, uh, for the film that, that is inside the cathedral, um, I used other cathedral, one cathedral was the first Gothic cathedral in the world called Sens Cathedral. It's a little city south of Paris, uh, which was the inspiration for Notre Dame. So there is a, a lot of similar places because it was the same architect. Um, so all the shots from above were shot in Sens. But the cathedral in Sens is more narrow. In uh, Notre Dame, you have five naves, and I found the uh, daughter of Notre Dame in Bourges, uh, a beautiful cathedral in the center of France. And the challenge for me was to, to match, you know, uh, all those images. And even the people who know the cathedral very well couldn't say where, where I shot. And, uh, but, but this is, you know, the pleasure of being a filmmaker, to be able to uh, make a reality that is consistent on screen, but it's made from different places. I, I had the same, for instance, I had the same actors and the same extras in those three places to make one scene that would last only 30 seconds. But it was like three days of shooting, one in uh, uh, sometimes real Notre Dame, because there were some angles in Notre Dame where I could shoot uh, away from the scaffoldings. But it's a very long answer for a short question, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes my job e easier. Um, you obviously play a lot with fire in this movie. There's a lot of flames. What challenges were there when making the film? Well, you know, to make a good movie, you have to have a good actor. Uh, you have to have a good star, uh, an appealing star. And here I have the most famous female star in uh, Paris, in France, which is Notre Dame. You know, it's, it's a beautiful star, internationally known. And I have the best villain. The best villain is the fire. Why is it the best villain? Uh, according to Hitchcock, a villain has to be charismatic, has to be photogenic, has to be dangerous. This is exactly what fire is. And uh, years ago, I did a movie called Quest for Fire. And just after that movie, I did uh, The Name of the Rose, where I put my whole set on fire as well. Uh, I had a lot of fires in Enemy at the Gates as well. Because precisely, you know, fire is a very, very powerful demon. And it's very, very photogenic. It's not the same image at all. When I was doing my framing, I frame without fire. And then when I start those huge fires, 
it's another image. It, it's, it's something appealing and dangerous. It, it was, and the firemen in Paris used to tell me that it was like an opera. It was a dramatic, dramatically beautiful. Uh, so, it, immediately when, when you have a fires in movies, it is, you're so, oh, certainly sure of getting good images. I know we have uh, uh, cameramen here, and they know that. You know, immediately when you have smoke, when you have fire, flames, it makes image wind, you have images with strength. Uh, the worst is a beautiful weather like today. It's beautiful for the crew, but it's not good for the screen. <laughs> um, you know, I was short here. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty short answer. <laughs> you combine fiction with these uh, real f images and, and real uh, uh, footage from the news. Well, you know, what was, what was really interesting is I had seen, like most of you, uh, images on the TV news, uh, but I didn't want to use those images. Uh, so I, I, I did a little interview on the internet asking people around the world uh, to send me the, their pictures if they, they were witnesses. Um, the first week we received 6,000 videos and at the end of the summer uh, we had 35,000. Uh, and they were a great help for me, uh, but not the way you can believe. Because I did the matching shot of those white shots of the cathedral on fire before seeing those images. The reason is I had around me all the firemen that were uh, involved with, with this event. And they would say, oh, I was here, my colleague was there, we, the, the, the truck was in this position. And uh, my astonishment when I saw the selection of the selection of uh, my the devoted crew that was selecting all those uh, images, because we, we had thousands of hours, um, I was impressed to see that it was matching perfectly. Uh, so what, what, what you're going to see, each time you have the full cathedral on fire, obviously this is the real footage. I didn't change, uh, I didn't digitally enhance those images. My images are not digitally enhanced as well. They are two. The, the, we created huge fires, very dangerous for the actors that were playing the firemen. Um, the temperature was between 800 degrees to uh, 1200 degrees. Uh, so it, it, was, it was vicious, but this is why what you're going to see uh, has the, uh, I think, the, the power of truth, you know. You, you, you know, the trouble today with digital images is uh, if you say to an actor, this blue screen is a fire, so pretend it's hot. And pretend that the, the broom that you have in your hand is a hose and there is pressure and water. So resist the water. You know, actors are not, how can you play in front of the blue screen? Here, they were playing in front of real flames and it makes a huge difference because I didn't have to say, pretend. They, they were living it and they could display their uh, acting qualities uh, with uh, genuine strength. What do you look for in a, in a script or in a project? I look about my passion. Um, I, I had the immense privilege to do only the films I wanted to make and in great freedom. Uh, even though I've been working with uh, Hollywood uh, for most of my movies, but I'm a final cut director, therefore uh, I have the nuclear bomb with me. And this is why there is no director's cut in my movies. The director's cut is what you're going to see. Um, and uh, what, it's, it's why, you know, when, when I choose a movie, I have to have this passion in me because I know I have to be um, happy every day for three years. And I have to convince large units. Sometimes behind the camera, I am like 600 people. Uh, on this one, only 200 on set, but uh, 400 in the uh, art department. 
So, so you, you're dealing with a lot of people. If you, uh, I feel as a director, if I don't have the passion, how can I ask people to have passion for something I would not have passion for? Uh, and, and you know, so on, the, on this movie, I spent about a year uh, in post-production, in uh, editing, in sound uh, recreation, in post-synchronization, in music. Uh, and once again, I have to wake up every morning saying, ah, I am going to have a great day. Uh, and then the whole unit follows, and, and, and it's wonderful. Uh, I, I don't know how to make films otherwise. Um, you know, I had the privilege to start very, very early in my life. I did the two film school in France uh, when I was very young. I got my diplomas when I was 19 um, and did 500 commercial, no, sorry, 400. You know, I'm getting now uh, like a southern France uh, dialogue, uh, or Ita Italian dialogue. Uh, no, for 400, there's still a great number of, uh, of films. And even in commercial, I did my way. Uh, so, um, one thing is important, you know, for instance, after doing a movie like Quest for Fire, I was, uh, was dealing with primitive people, I felt like going the other way more into dialogue and intellect with The Name of the Rose. But after The Name of the Rose, I felt like doing a very primitive movie with a movie called The Bear. And after that, after dealing with animals for, you know, three years, I felt uh, dealing with uh, a young woman, like in The Lover, was appropriate although sometimes it's a bit the same. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. But uh, then, then you see, I, I love doing films that I haven't done. I, I like to challenge myself. And for instance, when they did Me at the Gates, I never had done a real war movie. But it was a challenge for me because I'd never done that. But then I was passionate and interested, and I saw hundreds of movies. And then I, I came with my sort of innocence and desire to, to make something special, at least for me. You know, it, it may sound very selfish, but I, I'm not shooting for myself. I'm, it's myself for you. Um, and uh, this is what gives me the courage uh, to devote always three, three and a half years of my life in, for a movie. I have one last question because I'm curious. You've worked with these great Hollywood stars and really, really talented people throughout your career. Is there anybody you want to work with in the future that you think that you haven't worked with? No, I only want to work with the person that is adapted to the character. So I, ne I never had a, a dream about working with a famous actor. Uh, sometimes I prefer unknowns. Uh, if it's more adapted to the, the movie. Um, I found it very easy to work with major stars, uh, very pleasant. Um, I, uh, over a long career, I have only good memories. Only one actor in the name of the Rose, and not Sean Connery, I can guarantee, uh, was someone I didn't like. Uh, but Sean Connery didn't like him either. Uh, <laughs> but beside that, no, frankly, it has been a pleasure, you know, to, to be in harmony with uh, actors that could be like Jane March in The Lover, was a first-time actress. I had the same relationship that I could have with Sean Connery or Brad Pitt.